One of the virtues that is needed for our everyday life is patience. And it does not necessarily come naturally. None of us lack patience, even when we feel like we are impatient people. The truth is that it's so easy to frown and fret and complain in the face of discomfort. Because we face discomfort every day, you have annoying people in your house, you have annoying people in your workplace, and you have annoying situations every day. You might go to the grocery stores and you see a long queue. You go to the bank to withdraw, you see a long queue. And you go to the first station, you see a long queue. What is patience? Patience is to be calm and unruffled in discomfort. And it's also the quality of bearing offenses and injuries without anger or revenge. So in reality, how can patience be developed? Number one, patience is developed in experience and practice. So I want you to see patience like an elastic that is drawn. It has a limit. And some people's patience is plastic. <laughs> Once you want to draw it, it breaks off. Patience can also be seen like a muscle which can be trained. That is why patience is learned in practice. What does the scripture say about patience? Consider it a shared gift, friends. When tests and challenges come at you from all sides, you know that under pressure, your faith-filled life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. Patience is developed in experience and practice. And you have to be very intentional to allow it to do its work because by the time you seize that opportunity to learn how to develop your patience in practice, it can actually benefit you by making you to become a more mature person. For you, if you are a person that teaches children, you will discover that this set of people are annoying. And trying to teach children is one of the hardest things. And I would feel like people that teach children and are actually patient or have actually learned patients will become the kindest people. You would enjoy to teach children that are smart and sharp, but the children that seem dull and takes longer to grasp, those ones that are stubborn, those are the ones that you will use to learn how to become patient, to develop your patience. And for my life, I've had occasions that I've used and seized opportunity to develop patience in me. And some of these opportunities that I've seized are in some of the littlest things. Like when I misplace things, at home, I would fret and get angry and start blaming people. Who took this thing that I kept on the table? Who took this thing that I kept in so and so place? But in reality, I realized that I did not even keep it in those places I mentioned. And it would be like, see, you don't want to be patient. And this I have learned that having to stay alone, when I misplace things, who do I get to blame? I have no one to blame. And even when I get angry that I've misplaced those things, what am I angry at? That is still a character dysfunction in me. That I need to fix. Because if I cannot fix that character dysfunction with the things that I misplace, how am I going to deal with other people? How am I going to treat people? Will I be able to even have a little patience for people to change? Will I be able to have grace for people to correct their behavior that is unconducive for me? In my relationships, how will that affect me? Putting all this in perspective, whenever I misplace something at home, I try to be calm. And when I'm calm, it's easy to find that thing. I might realize that the thing I'm looking for is right in front of me. But if I decide to allow anger to fill me up and to be so ruffled, I realize that it might be in front of me and I may not still see it. And I don't know if you've had this kind of experience before. You can let me know in the comments section and let me know how you've allowed that to teach you patience. Or if you are still struggling with it, you can allow that to teach you to develop patience in you. And for you, you can see opportunity of the littlest things that tempts you to be impatient and use it to develop your patience. And I want you to do this. Seize every opportunity that you feel like you're being tempted to be impatient. Seize it to learn how to be patient. Seize it to learn how to be unruffled. Number two, patience is not pleasurable, but it is profitable. Nothing about patience makes you smile. <laughs> But I will tell you that it will make you smile at the end of the day if you are able to be patient. In the development process of patience, it's not going to be easy at all. You're not going to feel pleasure. It's not going to feel good. But the truth is, even in your muscle development, it's not a pleasure thing while you're carrying it and your muscle is being strained. But then you have purpose in mind. It's for a purpose. And the truth is, when you see patients with the eyes of purpose, you are going to enjoy the benefit of it because it is profitable at the end of the day. And for you to be able to develop patience, you need this mindset to be registered in you. It's not pleasurable. 
but it's profitable. So when you look at it with purpose that it's for my profit that I should be patient, you'll be able to endure. You'll be able to put yourself in composure whereby you have a steady mind. Number three, patience is not quietness, silence, or inactivity. It doesn't mean because you are patient and calm that you don't need to air out the discomfort. If you have to deal with someone in a relationship and you are saying that because you are patient, you just want to be quiet. The truth is being quiet is like an acceptance of whatever is happening. Being silent is like an acceptance of whatever is happening. So patience does not mean silence. The true patience could mean you bring up the situation or you bring up a conversation around the issue that is making you upset or the issue that makes you uncomfortable. You bring up that uncomfortable conversation without being petty and without making pointless assumptions. And silence and quietness and inactivity in itself, in a relationship sense, could mean you are withdrawing. It's a system of withdrawal that you are putting in place. And because this person is annoying you, because this person is getting on your nerves, you are like, since you're getting on my nerves, let me just be silent. And that process, you are withdrawing little by little. And before you know the energy that you are withdrawing from that relationship will be felt. And in your relationship with God, being patient is not the act of inactivity. Being patient is actually being active in prayer. Being hopeful in trusting God. Because your patience has to be connected with hope. You can air out your complaints to God in prayer. And when you pray to God about the things that are discomforting you, there are no more complaints. You turn into prayer. You can read the Psalms and you see the Psalmist will take his heart to God as it is. Tell God his problems and that is beautiful if you can learn that. The Bible says be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And this is very important because when you are dealing with God, God uses the affliction that you face to sharpen your character and make you mature. Like in point one, the scripture there says, see it as a share gift when you are tested and when you have challenges. Because God is using it to mature your spiritual life. Number four, to develop patience, you need to relinquish control. The truth is the number one problem with patience is control. When you feel like you can control everything and make things happen in your own timing and as you want. You can only control what you say and what you do. Anything external from you, you cannot have any control over it. And you trying to have control over other people, over what they say, over how they act, is you trying to make yourself impatient and not even trying to develop patience at all. The best way to develop patience is for you to know that I cannot control people. I cannot control what people do. I cannot make people even like me. So if I try to make people like me, it's either I will be angry with them or I will try to people please. Both of it is wrong. Because if you people please, you are doing yourself harm. If you are getting angry at them, it's pointless. You are just trying to be petty. I can control what I do. I can control what I say. Can I be unruffled in this? Can I keep my composure and then know how to treat people right? And if they treat me right or not, I will still keep my composure. I have to relinquish control and hand over everything to God. I cannot hold on to the mindset of control and still have patience. I have to relinquish control and look up to God to help me when I am facing challenges, when I am having issues with people. And when I do that, I can now learn how to be patient with people. I can now learn how to be patient in situations. I can now learn how to not get angry easily. And this will help sharpen my character. Scripture says, but that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. And patient endurance you refine our character and proven character leads us back to hope. Number five, you need virtues like love, self-control, and humility in order to develop patience. Patience is not a standalone virtue. You need other virtues like love, like humility, like generosity, and you need understanding, and you need self-control for you to be able to develop patience. Because all of this work hand in hand. By the time I have love for someone, I can have empathy for them. I can try to ask myself, what is it like to be them? And when I have self-control, when I'm in the heated moment of where I should play up, I can now control myself and try to get calm. And I need humility because when my pride is trying to hit me, when my ego is trying to come up, when I'm trying to be like, who do you think you are? How would you want to treat me that way? 
Why would you talk to me that way? I can then be humble and just realize that it doesn't even matter. There's no use trying to prove myself. I don't even need to prove myself to the person. And with this, this understanding can help me develop patience. Number six, patience is developed through the spiritual discipline in prayer and study of the word. So every spiritual discipline you find yourself doing will take you to be intentional. Because sometimes you will not do it because you feel like doing it. So you will need to actively go about it. And when you actively go about it, it's teaching you the process of patience. And in the Bible, we realize that patience is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So you need the Holy Spirit to be patient. And this, you can go to God in prayer to ask God, help me to have patience. Help me with patience in situations. Help me with patience when I'm dealing with people. Help me with patience when I'm waiting on you. You can talk about Joseph. You can talk about David. You can talk about the people that we see in scripture. And you can even speak in your own personal life how profitable patience is. How patience can help you avoid troubles and avoid some kind of fight that would be so unreasonable when you look back at it. And I know if you have times that you were patient and love to just allow that moment to pass, you would be grateful that you were patient. And it should teach you that patience is something to be embraced. You need patience to be consistent in your pursuit of your goals. You need patience to stay on even when things are not working. You need patience in the middle of the process of your life when everything has not balanced up. See yourself in the prison. He was trying to do the right thing. Yes, Potiphar's wife gave him an offer. Fine boy, come and sleep with me. Come on, I'm going to treat you right. I'm going to take care of you. You know you're such an handsome guy. I'm going to take care of you. And I myself am not looking that bad. This is tempting. Joseph mindset could show you where his priority was because if he did not have the patience to wait for God, for God's purpose to be fulfilled in his life, if he did not have the consciousness of the presence of God with him, there's nothing that would have stopped him from falling into that temptation. And he avoided that temptation. It led him to prison. That should have made him so angry. God, I was trying to do the right thing. And now I'm in prison. Why? That here is Joseph in the prison being kind to the prisoners. This is someone with his own affliction. And this could teach you how to be patient in affliction while you are in the waiting season. This is not a season of inactivity. It's a season of you trying to hold on to your composure. A season of consistency. Because patience will help you with all of this. David had the opportunity to kill Saul. But because he was not so impatient to assume the throne. Because if he was just thinking on a selfish side, he would have just said, let me kill him so that I can assume the throne. Because I've been anointed. And since I've been anointed, I've not even yet assumed the throne. What am I doing here? Let me kill this man. Of course, he's even trying to seek my life. Even when his men were telling him, this is your opportunity. Take it. But he seized the opportunity to become patient. And this is what you need to learn as a believer. That every opportunity that you have to be patient, seize it. I hope this video has been beneficial to you and you've learned something from it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am Uwe and This is my YouTube channel. Do well to subscribe to this channel and share this content to other people whom you feel it will be a blessing to them. Your friends and your family and your colleagues. You can share it and give it a thumbs up if you love the content. And drop a comment for me. Let me know the things that you are using to develop patience in your life. Because none of us actually lacks patience. But all of us need to learn how to develop patience. So let me know how are you developing patience. And how do you want to go about developing patience in your life. See you in my next video.